there were some amazing fights at the weekend and that main event i mean we, we need to get into that um, yeah fight of the year contention i mean definitely the best fight i think i've seen this year um cowboy cerrone a uh, fucking madman but that's why everyone loves cowboy he never doesn't bring it when's the last time you said oh that was a really uh what a shitty phoned in performance by cowboy cerrone it just doesn't happen um and what was pretty much a dominating performance against Rage and Rage and I was the, sh the fucking man. Okay, Rage and I was the man as game as they come. Um, but I believe the first man to ever drop Rage and Ally Quinta um, had that nasty front kick of uh, a la, what was that, Anderson Silva, Vitor Belfort? Um, yeah, yeah. Just nasty. It was a really fun fight, dude. And Cerrone, you know, proving that he's always game. I know you talked to him in the cage afterwards about the possibility of a, a, a Conor McGregor fight. But you're there first and foremost. What, let me ask you a question. What's the difference being there and commentating versus either watching at home or just spectating, even spectating in person? Because you're looking at it from a much different angle. Because I feel like when you come back to these shows after you actually commentate, you have a different sort of insight than anybody else. Well, to be honest, I mean, of course, the view is better and whatnot, and I'm the guy controlling the commentary if I'm commentating, but it's it's not that different, if I'm honest. I mean, yes, of course, you, you ride by the action, you can feel the blows. I mean, I'll be honest, Saturday night, I was sitting there watching that fight, Aya Quinter and Cerrone, and I was thinking, even though I've had, you know, at one point I had the most fights in the organization, but I'm sitting there thinking, these guys are fucking crazy. They're crazy, even though I used to do it. But that fight was just absolutely insane. I mean, Donald Cerrone, I mean, I, I, and Ally Quinter, of course. I can't praise these two guys enough. It was a, an unbelievable fight. Donald Cerrone, the thing that impresses me about him is that, you know, it looked to me like, you know, it was beginning to see the end of his career. Remember, he, he racked up three losses in a row at welterweight. And to be fair, they were against the best opposition out there. Robbie Lawler, former champion, and uh, there was two others as well. Uh, sorry, Darren Till went on to fight for the belt, and the third one, I forget who it was. But, uh, oh, M Masvidal. So, um, you know, but so you could be forgiven for starting to think that perhaps, you know, the end is nigh for Donald Cerrone, and maybe his best days are behind him. But people talked about how having a child has reinvigorated him and re-motivated him, and it certainly seems to, because when he took on that Alexander Hernandez in his last fight, there was a guy that was undefeated, looked sensational. Cerrone just put on a beautiful performance and, and took him out in the second round. And then again, coming into this fight against Ray Janal, I, I'm a big Cerrone fan. I love the way he fights, but I just thought, you know, Al's going to be too much for him. You know, he hasn't got as much miles on the clock. He hasn't been through as many wars. He hasn't had the stoppages, the knockouts, you know, just hasn't got as many miles on the clock. But, uh, but again, Cerrone came out and he just looked sensational. He looked better than ever. His kicks... I mean, that was the game plan from what his corner was saying was to, you know, use the kicks a lot, slow down Al's footwork so he can't get in and out. And it worked a treat. It was a tremendous game plan. But his kicks were so fast and so sharp and so painful to just even block. You know, Ally Quinter was blocking those kicks on his hands and they would have fucking hurt taking them on the legs. I mean, Cerrone beat the fuck out of him with the leg kicks. And it, it, it was beautiful to watch. Of course, Al... He had massive, massive moments as well. He wobbled Cerrone a few times. He got in there and, and definitely gave a real good account of each other. But um, as I say, it's going to take my hats off to both of them because in that fifth round, I mean, Al was a mess. He'd, he'd gone through a lot of punishment. He had blood pouring out of his nose, but he was still trying right to that final bell. He wasn't phased. He wasn't scared. He didn't stop trying to go forward. But, you know, on that night, Cerrone was just too much for him. Yeah, it's it's funny because there are more parallels. Like obviously, Cerrone just um, completely blew past your record for the most wins in UFC history, and that's fine. Nobody's even counting it anymore, to be honest with you. But you see the parallels <laughs> later on in your career, where Cerrone is sort of having this—I don't even say resurgence. That's not the right word, but it seems like he's now hitting this stride where people are talking about him being entitled contention. They're talking about these big, big money fights, um, and this is at, you know after people were like oh shit are his best days behind him and this is a very similar conversation that people had about you and we were we were doing the radio show while that was all happening i remember it's so it's so funny because we did the radio show and even at the time i didn't know you i just kind of thought was like all right well bisping is probably mentally winding down in his career as well because he's picking up other things to do and he's looking for you know not it, it has nothing to do with who you are as a fighter but it was like in you know at that point 
in everyone's mind, we're going like, oh, I don't even know if the title was on your mind at that time. And then all of a sudden, you know, you got a few big wins and you're right there on short notice, you get a title fight. I kind of see a similarity with Donald Cerrone, where now after that fight, everyone's like, oh shit, dude, Donald Cerrone might be the next dude in line for a title shot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got to remember Cerrone, as long as he's been around, all the bonuses that he has, the most wins, the most fights, the most performance night bonuses. I mean, they're great stats to have. Um, he's never been the champ, never been the UFC champion. And a lot of people are talking about the fact he has a kid now, you know, and for me, that was definitely one of the things that fueled me as a fighter. And some people, when they have children, they say, listen, I'm, I'm going to retire from fighting. I've, I've seen some fighters say that. They say, it's not fair for me to put my body through that sacrifice. But, uh, but I'm on the flip side. I'm like, well, no, I'm doing this for my family. And now Cerrone, obviously, I mean, listen, he's already got his legacy. Everyone knows that he's a, a legend of the sport. Uh, he's a fan favorite, you know, and he'll definitely go down in the history books. Well, he set many records. Yeah, likely a future him, Hall of Famer. Um... Definitely, definitely a Hall of Famer. But for him, there's probably a few things. A, he said he wants the title fight. After the fight, we asked about Connor or the title fight. You know, he said he gave up on Connor. He said he wants the title fight and then the money will come. Um, but for, for him, obviously he wants to be the champ and he wants to set his legacy and he wants to stack as many chips as possible. So, he can, you know, that's why we do it. We do it for money. And having a kid is a great motivator to push yourself and continue getting better. And he seems to be taking shots. You know, I thought when he got stopped off Darren Till, I thought, crap, has his chin gone? Well, it certainly hasn't because I like him to hit as hard as anybody in the lightweight division. That's a fact. And Cerrone took all his best shots. Yeah, he was wobbled once or twice here and there. But um, but as I say, he took them and fired back. So, I mean, at the moment in the uh, in the lightweight division, you know, there's a log jam, obviously. Poirier is going to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov. That has to be the next fight. That's a given. Um, so, I'm not sure. I mean, I think this opens the door for Cerrone versus McGregor. I think after that fight, Saturday night, I think after the fight he had in Brooklyn against Hernandez, that was another great performance. Um, so I guess now the, the ball's in Connor's court if he wants to take that fight. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. it's all up to what Connor wants to do, and it sort of sucks to have to, you know, be at another, you know, wait for another dude to sort of make that decision. It's not even like the UFC. There's really not much else uh, Cerrone can do except for be exciting, you know, it seems like Cerrone's sort of trying to figure out should he be complimentary toward Connor? Should he shit on Connor? He doesn't know the angle to like take in order to get that fight. Um, but shit know, on him. Yeah, just think shit on him, talk trash, all day. make fun of his fucking country, his family, whatever it is. Well, that's what uh, Connor is doing to Khabib. He was at it again already today. I just looked on Twitter this morning when I was having my coffee and. Uh, Khabib, I think it was Khabib posted a, a picture or maybe it was UFC, UFC 242 or whatever it is, they're going to be in Abu Dhabi and it listed some of the fighters, Khabib and a few others and Connor went on and commented, oh yeah, you're, three of the people on there are all dirty juice taking little rats. So he's talking shit to Khabib indirectly because right. so, he's obviously trying to get that rematch, you know? Yeah, I. Uh, you're talking about having a kid and how it um, kind of either motivates you or, you know, I had a similar thing because when I when I got my ex pregnant, I had a, a you know one of my friends, Ari Shafir, a great comedian. Uh, a lot of MMA fans know him as well from uh, Joe Rogan. He's one of Joe Rogan's guys. But Ari was like, "Dude, you gotta you gotta you gotta abort. No way. You're gonna you're gonna quit comedy. That's it. You never you're never, we're never gonna see you again." And you know he was half kidding. I think I hope. Um, but <laughs> by the way, I'm making eye contact with my son right now as I say this, which is so fucked up. <laughs> but abort. 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 But he, uh, you know, some people do go that way and, you know, they, all of the same reasons that you take that risk to become a fighter, it becomes apparent. Everything becomes into focus and you go, oh shit, my job is now to protect that child. And you have one of two paths. You go like, well, you know what? There's no more taking a risk. Everything I've been falling, saying I'm going to fall back on, now I kind of have to do that because I can't risk anything because I'm risking something and I'm sort of putting my kid's livelihood and his lifestyle on the line which is sort of selfish. Or you go the other way where you say, this is now the biggest motivation in the world and I cannot fail. I do not have the opportunity to fail now. Um, and I just, I've always had that way of thinking. Um, and I think that 
you know, that's probably what's going on with Cerrone right now, where it's like everything else has been like you're running a race without a finish line. There's no real goal in mind except for like making some cash. You know, living your dream is a great thing. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the thing with Cerrone is this is what he's always done, though. You know, so it's not like he's got to reinvent himself. I mean, he's been, he's had the fun, he's had the ride, he's got the fame, he's no doubt earned a lot of money over the years as well. Um, all he's got left to do now is win the belt. You know, and that was kind of the thing with my career. It was very similar. You know, I'd done well over the years, but I'd never won the belt, and that was highly motivated for me. And if he wants to, I don't know. I mean, every time he walks out for the fight. He looks at his son, he goes and gives his son a kiss. I used to do the same thing, by the way. No reporters writing stories about that, you fucking pricks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I used to do the same thing. I'd always go find my kids, I'd give them a kiss. <laughs> no, nothing. Cerrone does it. And everyone's, oh my God, it's so awesome. Every time he goes and sees him, gives him a kiss. I'm like, yeah, I used to do that with my kids, but whatever. You weren't interested then, were you? But um, no, listen, of course, he's got his kid. He wants to be champion. He wants to bring his son in the ring and hold the belt up high when that happens. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and Reginald, I'm just going to say once more, Reginald Iquin, I mean, friend of the show, guest on here. You love that guy. It's a shame what happened. Shame he didn't win the fight. You know, but the best man won. It's as simple as that. Cerrone was the better man on the night. And Al is man enough to admit that. But fights like that, fights like that take life of you as a fighter you mm. take time of your career that was a five round war it really was you know and and it does change you as a fighter i mean i remember in my fights i never used to get that marked up at the start of my career sometimes after a fight even if i'd lost on the very rare occasion i lost even if i had lost i wouldn't have a mark on me and then towards the end of my career i'd look like i had been through a bloody meat grinder in every single fight because you start developing the scar tissue and all things like that so your face opens up a lot more but i like winter will be back um i thought rose looked fucking amazing that first round like oh shit i was i call i did not call this right i thought she was gonna struggle way more she looked phenomenal um and then just gondraj just straight up rampaged her thought i thought she broke her neck how yeah. dare you jessica how Scary. fucking dare you I, I didn't like this fight for Rose. Yeah, it, yeah I did, went over this last week. I didn't like, I didn't like that she's the champ, beating probably the most successful woman strawweight of all time twice. And you want to, you know, Jen check. You kind of protect her. Now they go champion should be able to fight anywhere. I get that, but her star is just building. So then you fight, send her to Brazil in her toughest stylistic matchup, and then she loses. It's like, all right. And then it's just gone, Josh. I hate to be shitty about it, but is on Josh gonna take the torch and build the division more? Is she gonna make more notoriety around it? Now the UFC might what they're doing go in the states. We're all set, man. You don't get this, you moron. Obviously, we're all set. We don't care. The ESPN's cover our nut. Seventy thousand buys. We don't give a fuck. Hundred thousand. We don't give a fuck. But internationally, we're not behind paywalls, so we can grow internationally. The ESPN thing only fucks over our American fighters internationally they get it for free you guys know this right there's no espn plus digital for brazil or for china or for the uk i don't think it's in canada for them it's only here for us it's very strange so maybe them having just gone drives being the champ is going to do more as far as overall eyeballs in brazil than with wood rose and also, you know, with Rose, her demeanor when she goes, I'm just relieved, man. It's such a beast to do this. I'm not making any decisions now, but, you know, I don't know if I'll fight again. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Especially if if fighting is not what you want to do 100% of the time, eat, sleep, and drink that. And she's been, she's been a champ. She's been on top of the mountain. She's like, oh, this is the view from up here? Oh, it's cool. I'm going to go do something else. There's nothing wrong with that. The pressure of being that champion just you know you can tell rose she's not a materialistic person doesn't really care about money she wants to buy a farm in denver and fucking do that she already has a man she's set man so if that's what she wants to do i get it she's like mm, i'm good man i'm just relieved it's fucking over give me back home nothing wrong with that notice a lot of people a lot man especially in, in more so in ufc than boxing but when they get to a certain level where they have money they're content their legacy is pretty cemented notice they don't fight a ton or at all anymore it's too it's it's a rough gig man it's a rough fucking gig especially now when it's 
when before I could be on pay-per-view and I get all these accolades and I get this big dump sum of money and there's, you know, these big networks are falling right now and, you know, I can hit the streets and people see now it's for the love of the game. It really is. It's really, it's such a niche sport. We've gone back kind of on the underground. It's such a niche sport. So you better love doing it. Otherwise, notice Connor's not fighting. He's really not. Khabib, right? He's at the top now. He's been fighting for a long time. He goes, I might have three left, if that. You look at these guys who get to the top, like, I'm fucking good, man. Especially when they have money. Connor's like, ah, fuck that. Nate Diaz. Mm. I guess I'll get out of bed. I don't know. Good card overall, though. Then uh, there was Bellator, right? Yeah. Which I would say Bellator won this weekend if, if you're going dueling there i saw more noise around bellator because of the way their fights ended than you, i did in the ufc the rose one obviously it was a little bit of shock list yeah. we got slammed on our neck but i still saw more things about bellator than i did the ufc um because obviously uh patricio pitbull knocked out michael chandler in the first round that was their main event those are two amazing lightweights and obviously there's this horrible kind of beef between the two and Pitbull's brother and Chandler beat him. So there's kind of, and then Pitbull becomes a double champ champ. Um, so that's pretty dope. And then Douglas Lima, Michael Page. So nasty knock. If you haven't seen it, look it up. It was all over the place. See, that I think that's that went more viral than anything that the UFC did this weekend because that was insane. Insane. Because, you know, Michael Page, the thing with him, I think he's 18 and 0, right? It, you want to see him face tough competition. And so when he's fighting Paul Daly, you thought, all right, that's going to be his tough 14 though. So that's going to be his first, that was kind of his first test when he fought Paul Daly. One of the worst fights you've ever seen in your life. It actually lowered his, his stock. So like, all right, that was just a bad matchup. Paul Daly decided to wrestle. It's not Michael Venom Page's fault. Now in this welterweight tournament, he has no choice. He's going to fight monsters. So you get Douglas Leba, who is hands down one of the best welterweights on the planet Earth. He's fucking amazing. Phenomenal striking. He's only lost a, f a few of the very, very best in the world. Has the great track record. He's a fucking animal. So you know Michael Venom Page can't... We know this is the real deal. He got knocked out. It was a bad knockout, man. And it was kind of weird because it, was, it wasn't really a... Uh, matter of fundamental or skills of getting knocked out. It was like he went for one of those weird like kicks that he does his movement slipped then on the way up gets just knocked out. He was doing that. It looks like he was getting into the mood of getting that, that snake punch he that always he does. does. Yeah. yeah, that's what he does. And then Lima timed it perfectly. He didn't, he wasn't even faint. He was like staying still. And then kicked, boom, him. kicked him. Yeah. And then the other, you know, so obviously Douglas Lima's highlight went viral. Uh, AJ McKee beat Pat Curran, and then uh, our boy Jake Hager was kind of got a lot of flack um, for holding a choke a little too long. Do you see the guy they fought? This TJ Jones, shout out to TJ Jones for even even having the balls to jump inside that octagon or that ring, um, that cage, I should say. Yeah, this is TJ Jones. He's he works at a beef plant. His nickname is Tombstone. Yeah, people are joking like it looks like a fan snuck in on the way it's it straight up does um you know i i ugh, i don't know where to go with this i mean when it's only a second fight so especially at heavyweight you're usually fighting some pancakes like this the problem is jake is such a, a big name from the wwe coming over so it, there's a lot of eyeballs on it um I, but i would go a little different if i'm uh Scott Coker, where I wouldn't give him this amateur of a competitor. I would get because Jake's not like a CM Punk who has zero background. Jake wrestled at Oklahoma. Like that motherfucker, he's gone through the ring when it comes to wrestling. So he has such a good foundation. We don't need to give him this much of a cakewalk. Like, come on. And I guess Jake got a little bit of heat because he held the choke too long. Yeah. This isn't the end of the world. This isn't like a all right. All right, I, I don't know. Do you want to see a little bit of it? Sure. The tapping that the referee was doing on you was actually your opponent. After the last fight, the guy was wrapping around punches on me still when I had it. So I 
didn't know it felt like him. It happened so fast. Oh, that's fair. He thought it because he was tapping hard. Yeah. So he thought he was punching. Exactly. That's fair. There you go. And the ref didn't yell. He yelled again, later. Again, what's the cool thing to do in society? Oh, let's hate on fucking Jack Swagger. Oh, fuck you, man. He held too long. I guess. The guy seems fine. This looks like more like a make a wish kind of thing than a, than a competition. All right. I saw all the uproar online. I'm like, geez, he must have held in a fucking deep, deep rear naked choke while the guy was asleep and the guy was bleeding. This must be all awful. I watched him like, oh. all right, that wasn't shit. I mean, again, he thought the guy was hitting him. You can't understand. If you want to give anyone flack, I guess you give the ref flack, but he kind of jumped out pretty early. Not a big deal. All right, what else you got, Jim? Uh, actually, before this, that Volkanovski guy, did you know he was the guy rugby. that fought? Yeah, the rugby at 200 plus pounds. Was he 200 yeah, pounds? Over I 200 think pounds. Rugby. <laughs> like How crazy good thick or like fat thick? He's me a problem, man. I would assume you give him a title shot next. That's what he's asking for. What uh, so this one, you, title shot. Yeah, you spoke about this already, but Rose Namajunas, she mentioned that they asked her for clarification when she was saying that stuff about what she wants to do next because she seemed like she wanted to be retired yeah. but she says she kind of just wants to do something else with her life right now yeah but i think also in hindsight you know when when in like two weeks find out what she says when you're when you're when you put everything you have into a fight and she's going through camp and th that stuff sucks man especially when you come up short and you lose the last thing you want to do is talk about fight what's next it's literally the last thing on planet earth so mm. um I just knowing her the way I do when she very first started before she was even big and was fighting I would I would this makes sense to me with her um and there's nothing wrong with it in, at all but also again it's just when when you're in Brazil and you, you travel that far and you had to go to camp she cut weight and it didn't go your way and there's all this pressure and people go man what's next you're like I'm not not this I don't want to do this I just want to get away from this so I don't know if necessarily she's gonna retire next, but if she does, it would make sense. Good for mm -hmm. her. One more thing about that. So she posted this after the fight, I think a day later. She said that that's the last time she lets Dana White pick her walkout oh, song. Oh God! Why so apparently, pick your <laughs> apparently they. She said that, or actually her manager said that Dana picked the last two songs because for whatever reason there were technical difficulties, which doesn't make sense, right? Well, here's the, I, so. So when I was fighting in Brazil, and, and even before that, but really when I was in um, when I was in Brazil, um, I wanted to come out to this Chris Brown song. And the night before the fight, I get a call from Dana, and they go, "He goes, you can, you can, you're not walking out of this song. You got to come up with something else." I was like, "That's what I want to walk out to." He's like, "Not happening." So he goes through all the walkout songs. He controls a lot of that. Yeah. That's so lame, man. That's what no, gets you hyped strange. up, right? That, that's what gets you. Like, but it could moment. mean some. But also, it doesn't have to get the fans hyped up. It can mean something personally to you. No, that's what I'm saying. It gets you hyped up. Yeah, it's, it, but it, again, it's not about Dan. Yeah. It's not about what he wants. That's what's fucked up. So what, what's Rose say here? Well, she just said that. That's the last time I let Dan White pick my walkout song. Thank you for Zoe. Never forget this experience. Then her manager or her agent had to clarify that she said that because she let him pick the song because there were technical difficulties with other songs before so she didn't want to deal with the hassle so she's like oh you just pick it what did he pick uh thunderstruck acdc it's a good song <laughs> yeah if you're but i mean yeah it's 50 years old it doesn't match rose's no. personality yeah can you deal i heard uh my favorite talking to him a while back that uh for a long time he wasn't allowed to walk out to Cal uh what's called california, california love, love by Tupac. Why? I don't know. It's just Dana wouldn't let him walk out to that for the longest time and like finally he did. It's very strange. That is the song for him. Yeah. What else you got? Another one just going back to Michael Page and his post after the fight about Too much Lima. what? Confidence. Too much success. That's fair. If he's being honest about yeah. it. If he's being honest about it, that's fair. Some guys have that problem. No, oh, so during the fight he had too much. You know how like he was on the ground, he and Lima literally couldn't do anything. He was grabbing onto his wrists and he couldn't move. Mm. So he was like, damn, I got so much, you know, a boost of confidence from that. So he got a little bit too I don't know, his ego maybe. The story from Michael Venom Page, I mean, how how's he respond to this? Does he come back and, and you know, you can't give him cakewalks. We're past that point. So give him another tough guy if he knocks him out, then then we know what kind of 
fighter. Then you can invest, if you're Bellator, you can invest in Michael Lennon Page. Mm-hmm. And as we said about Lima, and Lima came in too. He's like such a great dude. Lima's amazing. Yeah, so this, that's what Michael Venom Page was saying about him too. If he had to take one loss, it's to Lima. I mean, probably the greatest striker in Bellator history. You look at his record, his knockout record, stuff like that. competition. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell. And leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video. And... Tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.